So last time I was here, I did my presentation in Spanish. When was that, Joaquin? Three years ago? My Spanish hasn't got any better, so I'm just going to do it in English today. I apologize. And I just want to say, Marco, I saw you last weekend in La Graciosa. Yeah, <laughs> he was uh, at a sporting event that I was at, and he, I saw him on the boat on the way back from La Graciosa to Lanzarote. And I was like, wow, look at that guy. He had the RG t-shirt on, the RG shorts, and he was drinking the RG. And I thought, what a great representative of our company. But I didn't come and say hello because you were busy with somebody else. Next time. Okay, so I'm here today to share with you a little bit about how I work. Can I just check, is everything okay with the translation? See or not? Okay. Um, so I'm here today to share with you a little bit about how I work. And I hope that I can teach you some things that can help you to really excel in your forever business. Is that okay? Good. So, it's easy to see the leaders like me and think that maybe it was easy for them, or maybe they came in to the business and they were brilliant from day one. But that's never the truth. And I want to take you right back and share my journey with you so you can see the steps that I had to go through and maybe the mistakes that I made on my way up to the top. So when I first joined, I made supervisor within nine days and I thought I had made it. I thought I was the best. Supervisor in nine days. I stayed supervisor for nearly 12 months and I only did 79 case credits in my first few months of the business because actually I thought it was a sales job and I could sell stuff. I loved the products, I loved the clean nine and I sold loads. Then the next year, what did I do? The next year I did 349 case credits. Well that wasn't gonna get me anywhere because again, I was still just playing around with the business. I was still retailing the products, but a few people did join me. I was just playing around with the business, but somebody who joined me became really successful. So I was pushed up the marketing plan. And that year I made manager, so one year after joining. Is anybody here not manager yet? You see, you don't have to do it quickly. But if you learn the skills to do it properly, then it will happen. I did not do that. I was pushed up. Okay, so year two is when I got really serious about the business. Why did I get serious about the business in year two? It was because when I made manager in 12, uh, on the 12th month, I attended my first ever success day. I attended my first ever business presentation. And at that point, only after I made manager, at that point, I truly realized what I had my hands on. And then I decided to get to work. I really became a contributor to the business. So I started to teach everybody everything that I learned. I stepped up and I learned the profession. In that year though, I still didn't quite understand the marketing plan because I'm not very good with numbers and I really didn't understand it because you can see in that year I did 1,349 case credits. Now if you know our marketing plan, you'll know that if I'd have done 1,500 case credits, I would have won a trip to the Global Rally, right? So why didn't I? Because I, wasn't, I was still kind of playing around with it a little bit. But the good news is, that year, I accidentally did chairman's bonus. Because I had no idea what I was doing. Somebody in my upline said, well, if you do an extra 475 case credits this year, and you help the girl underneath you do 600 case credits, you can get a check in Hawaii. 
So I said, okay, I'll do that then. So I did. And I stood behind the stage with my check in Hawaii, and I said to my friend, who'd also got a check, have you got any idea how we got these checks? And she said, no, have you? I said, I haven't got a clue. Like, I, I was still what we call, sorry about the translation, but I was still winging it at this point. I was taking it a bit more serious, but I still didn't quite have my finger on the button. But the amazing thing is, the company thought I was good, and they put me up on stage to tell 5,000 other people how to do the business. And I hadn't even qualified to be there. <laughs> Have any of you seen the training where um, it's called Ange Lochran Facebook training where I'm in Hawaii? So, yeah, see, I still didn't know what I was doing, but I was on stage and I hadn't qualified to be there. I think the thing is, when you're passionate about something and you just tell everyone what you do know, it's enough. And that's all I've been doing for the past six years. Um, have I skipped a year? Okay, so the next year, th then I did 4,700. And you can see I probably still wasn't quite understanding that if I had just done 300 case credits more, I would have been what we call a 5,000 qualifier, which would have meant an extended stay for the global rally. Um, but then I started to develop managers because now I started to find my feet and know what I was doing. I was getting a bit confident then. So I became a senior manager. When I'd helped two people get to manager, I thought, why don't I help some more? So I became a soaring manager, that's five. A key factor to this was running my team in a Facebook group. Because I believe that if you create great energy and a great vibe, then your team will flourish. So we really kept a really fun and motivational Facebook group just for the team. And that's where we did all of our communications. Because it can be quite hard working on your own, right? It can be quite lonely. So our office is our Facebook group. And it's the best office ever. So this year, I got a check for 27,000 um, US dollars. And the company was still thinking I was quite good. So they flew me all around the world to teach other people to do what I was doing. So the next year, so this is the year that I knew I knew what I was doing. I was no longer winging it because this was the year I did 10,000 case credits. So I did level three of chairman's bonus. Again, I was speaking at the global rally. I think it was Singapore that year. Was anybody in Singapore? Um, that year, they flew me to so many countries. I did 68 flights in 52 weeks. My boyfriend is a pilot. I flew more than him that year. <laughs> and the reason that I was doing that is because I was following the biggest leader in this business that I, that I know and look up to. And I saw that leader flying around the world for the, for the country, helping. So I did the same. So as you can see, 10,000 case credits. That year, in becoming a Sapphire manager, that's nine managers directly to you, it was a really busy year for me. I'm also a mum, and I have a lot of dogs as well. So I'm very, very busy, but I still did this for the company because it was the right thing to do. I wanted to be like Jane Leach. Anybody heard of her? And Jane flies around the world training everybody, so I did the same. So the next year, year five, they told me in forever, if you work hard for five years, you'll never have to work again. I didn't believe them. It turned out to be true. In year five of my business, I did 12,500 case credits, and that puts you in the executive global leadership team. The executive global leadership team is who they test all the products on. So I have a house full of um, all the new products for next year. Do you want to see them? Yeah. Don't be silly. <laughs> so, in that year, I actually became one of the first Sapphire Eagle managers. I actually then became a diamond Sapphire manager. That's 17 managers. Um, I was really tired, I'm not going to lie, I was absolutely exhausted. And in that year, 
my chairman's bonus was half a million dollars. So I'd spent that time seeing those people on the, that stage with that big check. I never thought it would be me. But it was, and it can be you too. I worked hard in those five years. Maybe not the first year, I admit. But I worked hard enough in those years so that I didn't have to work that hard anymore, ever again. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's a bit sad, um, but it's really important. Because on my, um, sixth, on my fifth year anniversary of being with the business, um, I should have been in Cancun. Did anybody go to Cancun for the Eagle Manager Retreat? Yeah? I should have been there, but I wasn't there. Because when I boarded the flight from Madrid to Miami, my dad was out on a cycling ride um, training for Ironman with my brother in Lanzarote. My dad, my dad was an Ironman. And I got a phone call to say my dad had had an accident and I had to go back home. So I didn't make it to Cancun. In fact, I flew to Gran Canaria. And for the four weeks that followed, my dad was fighting for his life. On this day, well, tomorrow, last year, my dad died. This absolutely devastated our family. He rode his bike every day in Lanzarote. He was an extremely well-known and well-loved sportsman on the island. The, the triathlon family, the sports family, as Marco will confirm, is a very tight-knit community. It absolutely devastated everybody. In those four weeks that my dad was in intensive care in Gran Canaria, I didn't turn my phone on once. I did absolutely zero hours of work. And in that month, I had my biggest ever paycheck from forever. In that month, working zero hours, I was paid 45,000 pounds, which is around 55,000 euros, or it was at the time. That is the power of forever. So what I'll say to you is, in the last year, by the way, so since then, so exactly 12 months, I haven't been building my business. I've still been flying around the world for forever, but I've not been building my own business. So I've managed to take 12 months off from this business, and I've still been paid hundreds of thousands of euros because of the work that I put in before. So what I'll say to you now is work hard now whilst you can, and forever will never let you down. So when the, our whole world was crashing around us and our whole world became devastated, there was one thing that was still there that was stable, something giving me peace of mind, and that was forever. What other company can do that for you? I didn't have to call anybody to ask for time off. We had to pay for hotels. It was really expensive for us and the family over in Gran Canaria. Had to pay for hotels, but I'd won that many holiday vouchers from the company. They covered it. Over 3,000 euros worth of hotel bills. And I've managed to be at home spending all that time with my family since then, exactly where I need to be. Thank you to this business. Any other boss would never have allowed me to take four weeks off and then the following 12 months. That is what forever can do for you and your family. So, I filled out the same application form you guys did. I bought the same box that you guys did. So how can it be that one person can fill out that form and buy that box and do the kind of things that I've done, and other people can buy that form and buy that box, fill out that form and buy that box, and not be successful. What's the secret? I will tell you later, but in the meantime, I'm going to tell you how I got that form and why I joined the business. So as you've heard, I live on the island of Lanzarote, Our biggest attraction is camels and mountains. It's a very small, dusty island where not a lot happens, but I love it. 
The reason that I moved to Lanzarote is because I'm extremely close to my parents, and they retired there around, um, I think, about 12, 13 years ago. So I followed them over there, and my daughter Arabella was born on the island. Um, I love the island, it's great. I didn't join somebody on the island. There was a forever living distributor on the island, but I didn't know. Nobody had ever offered me the products. Nobody had ever asked me to like their Facebook page about the products. Nobody had ever um, come to see me and asked me if I would like to look at the business opportunity. But actually, a lady on Facebook did. So instead of joining somebody on the island, the distributor that lived just behind me, um, I actually joined a stranger on Facebook. And the reason that I joined her is because she was using the aloe toning kit. And I have a background in fitness. I, um, like Marco, used to be a personal trainer and work in a lot of gyms. And I didn't believe she was using the aloe toning kit on her Facebook. And I didn't believe it would work. Um, I almost bought it kind of to prove her wrong. But actually, the toning kit does work. Has anybody got the toning kit? It's a brilliant product. Everybody buy one. Put it on your next order. It's amazing. I really don't think that we sell it enough. So I bought the product, and I loved it, and I told everybody about it. She asked me to look at the business presentation. I did, and I joined. But there was a huge problem, because not only do we have camels in Lanzarote, but what we have is aloe. So you know Rex? He owns 85% of the world's aloe fields. The other aloe fields are in Lanzarote. <laughs> I think 5% of the world's aloe is in Playa Blanca, where I live. In my village alone, there are two aloe vera museums that are tourist attractions. So coaches go from all the hotels all around the island several times a day to take tourists to see how aloe is made and, and to buy products really, really cheaply. In my village alone, there are 26 shops that sell aloe vera. I don't mean a shop that has an aloe vera stand. I mean a shop called Aloe Vera of Lanzarote. There are 26 of those in my village. Every single supermarket you go to in Lanzarote has a display of aloe vera on the checkout. And every single product is on offer. And if you don't want to buy that product, you can actually buy an aloe vera plant on the next shelf. So how was I going to sell aloe vera on Lanzarote? Impossible, right? So I applied what I applied to, to anything I do, and that was my passion. And I decided, OK, I'm not going to use this as a problem. I'm going to get around this problem. I'm going to get really passionate about this company. I'm going to find a network. And my network's not going to be on Lanzarote. It's network marketing. And I really think if there's one thing that I realize when I coach people in forever that are maybe struggling, does anybody feel that they are struggling in their business right now? The one thing that they are not doing is networking. So we're in network marketing, right? It means you've got to find a network, and you've got to market to that network. And if that part of what you're doing is missing, then you're always going to be struggling in your business. So I think it's really important that you learn how to network. To learn how to network, you, un you need to understand what networking is. So I'm going to read this out. I should know it by now. I've said this presentation a million times. So networking as a noun. It is a supportive system of sharing information and services amongst individuals and groups having common interests, forming business connections and contacts through informal social meetings. As a verb, it means to cultivate people who can be helpful to one another professionally. So I have been coaching one of the ladies that's sitting here today. And one of the things that we actively um, have been talking about is networking in your local community. And she proudly told me that on the plane here from Seville today, she got talking to the lady sitting next to her on the plane. 
and exchanged contact details, spoke to her about the business. They're going to connect on social media, or they already have connected on social media. They're going to get to know each other and form a relationship. That's what networking is. Has anybody else connected with a new person on their way to the event today? Because I saw loads of you outside chatting and taking photos before I came into the event. In England, that wouldn't be happening because there's a huge shopping center there full of people. There's a huge shopping center there full of people who are working on a Saturday. So when my team arrive at the venue, they wouldn't stand outside chatting and taking photos. What do you think they would be doing? Going into the shopping center and giving out their cards, putting their notices on notice boards and making as many new friends as possible before coming into the venue. At lunchtime, they won't do what the majority of people will do, stand outside and have a cigarette. Absolutely not. What they will do is continue to work the shopping center and make sure that nobody was left without a business card. It's also about supporting other businesses and other business people. So I will always, so if I receive good service, for example, yesterday I had a car cleaned, then I will make a post about the person that cleaned my car and recommend that people go to have their car cleaned there. Maybe my nail technician, maybe my cleaner. I will always recommend other people's services. I will go into local businesses and ask them, hey, what can I do to support your business? Because it's not about you, it's about them. It's about getting to know people and seeing how you can help them. And if you're not supporting other local businesses, how do you expect them to support you? And you have to remember, as lovely as our clothes are, as lovely as our logo is, as lovely as some of you, most of you have arrived here today looking stunning. The thing is, it's not about the clothes, it's not about the logo, it's not about forever. It's about you as a brand, you as a person. And you have to understand that people buy people. What you have got is your unique selling point. It's you, your personality, your smile. Your energy is what makes your business special. So you should constantly be on a journey of becoming the best version of you that you can in every way. Lots of people ask me how I built a big business on social media. Because yes, you heard that I decided that I could not build a business on Lanzarote. I decided the network that I was going to use was going to be on social media because social media would be a way that I could reach out to people in other countries that weren't so overwhelmed with aloe vera. So I decided to use Facebook, and I decided to realize that I needed to stand out on social media. There are millions and millions and millions of users on social media. How could I be different? So the first thing that I did was I made a striking social media profile. I chose my favorite colors to represent me as a brand. And my colors, as you can see, are aqua blue, um, gray, silver. So I chose these colors, and I made sure that I went out and bought loads of accessories in these colors. So my phone cover, my iPad cover, my laptop cover, my business cards, my pen. I even accessorized my house in these colors so that all the photos that I put on social media were color coordinated, which really made me stand out. I made sure that my profile picture on social media was a super happy, healthy, smiley photo of me to represent me. And I made sure that I color coordinated that big picture at the top. These very simple steps can make your, your profile stand out. So you know, if you walk around the shopping center today, which I hope loads of you will on, at, at lunch break, because if you don't do it, I will. Um, as you walk around the shopping center today, if you were actually shopping and not networking, and you walked past five shoe shops, the shoe shop that you choose to go into will be as a result of the window display, correct? 
you will go into the window, you will, you will have a look at a window and you will decide like that if you want to know more about the products, if you're attracted, if you've got a good feeling about that shop because of the window. Maybe also because you might see the smiley staff in the doorway, there might be some nice music on, but the whole vibe of that shop is what makes you go in to look at the shoes. And yet, if the shop next door is a little bit dull and not colour coordinated and not high vibe, then you're probably just going to walk straight past it. Even though they may have the same shoes at half the price, you're not going to be attracted. So when you look at your social media, think of it as your shop window. Has anybody heard of Harrods? It's a big, famous toy store in London. Harrods employ so many staff just to dress the window. Their Christmas window costs over a million. They, have, they still, despite the reputation that they have, that everybody would go to Harrods if there was nothing in the window, they still invest all of that money in making the perfect window display. And we can do it for free on social media. And by colour coordinating, you can make that high impact without having a whole team of people and spending a lot of money. This is something that you guys could go and implement tomorrow. And it really does make a difference. Once you've changed your social media, I recommend that you leave it like that for at least six months because it's brand recognition as well. So people need to see you. I recently started work with a business coach and the reason that I started to work with her and the reason that I discovered her is because she, I kept seeing her on social media and her profile really stuck out at, at me and I kept seeing this girl. And the reason that her profile stood out is because it was so colour coordinated Everything was white, but she was wearing a bright pink dress in both the profile picture and the cover picture. And I just kept seeing this girl popping up everywhere in this pink dress. And eventually I wanted to know more about her, and now I work with her. So it works. Anybody looking forward to going shopping for some new accessories, colour-coordinated accessories? Women, I've just given you an excuse to go and spend some money. You can tell your husbands. Ange told me I needed this new handbag. Um, so you need to get your social media profiles right. You will see here many of the top leaders that you know and love have done exactly that. Even our lovely Jane Leach here, um, Philip Ritter, you'll have heard of. All the top leaders do exactly this. So why not you? Why not now? Why not this weekend? It's such a good, fun project to do. People ask me, well, what do I post on social media? Now I've got my profile right. I'm ready to network. I'm ready to support other local businesses. I'm ready to make new friends. I'm ready to add people to my Facebook. But what am I going to post about? And here's how to make it super, super easy. Pick three or four subjects now. You got your pens? Pick three or four subjects now that you are really passionate about. So, are you really passionate about horse riding? We got any horse riders in the room? Loads. Um, are you passionate about dogs? I know I am. Not very common in Spain, but I'm the, the crazy dog lady of Lanzarote. Um, are you really passionate about sports? If you know me, if you follow me on social media, then you know that when you come to my profile, you know that you are going to get three or four subjects. There's going to be no surprises. There's consistency and continuity with what I post because I just rotate those subjects, because that's what I'm passionate about. It's not about trying to be anybody else, it's about being you and expressing yourself. So if you come to my profile, you will obviously see Forever and the Business Coaching. You will see sports, you'll see me with my dogs, and you'll generally see me traveling around with my daughter, Arabella. Does anybody follow me on social media? Am I right? That's what I'm known for, right? So what are you known for? Maybe you're a Star Wars geek. Any Star Wars geeks in the room? Just one over there? Two? 
two admitting that they are Star Wars geeks, guess what? You need to embrace that because the world is full of Star Wars geeks and they also brush their teeth and wash their hair. So don't think that you have to do something that will fit in with other people. Really just embrace your own passions. Do more of what you love and photograph it and put it on social media. But be consistent. I would stay away when you're using your profile for business networking. I would stay away from politics and religion. I would stay away from sharing things about cruelty to animals, for example. If you feel passionately about the protection of animals, instead of sharing a video of a dog being beaten in a street, why don't you go down to your local animal shelter and give an hour of your time as a volunteer and post about that? So, thanks. What you need to do is instead of spreading problems and negativity on social media, if there are things like that that you feel passionate about, then be the change, raise awareness through giving your time. Create stories that people want to follow. So who watches any series on um, Netflix or whatever it is that you guys watch? Has anybody seen, for example, The Walking Dead? Or which series do you watch? Homelands? Anybody shout me out any Spanish series that people might know and love? Sorry? Okay, so t TV series is that people watch every week. So it's a drama that somebody watches every Monday night at 8 o'clock. Do you know what I mean? Are you with me? Okay, so say you're watching your favorite drama on Monday night at 8 o'clock. And at the end of the drama, something amazing happens at the end every night, doesn't it? So something with your characters that you love, the storyline that you love, it always ends on a cliffhanger. And the reason that it ends like that is because they need you to go onto the TV the following Monday because you need to watch it again so you know what happened, right? And you get addicted to these things. This is what your social media needs to be like. You need to be the one that everybody wants to check in on to see what happens next. And that requires continuity. That requires storylines and characters to follow. So those that follow me, it's very likely that you'll know the name of my dog. You will know the name of my daughter. You probably know what sports I do every day because I'm consistent with my characters and my storylines. And that's what you need to be too. Because guess what? If somebody starts to show an interest in you and starts to follow you on social media, and one day you're all about one thing and the next day you're about something else, it's confusing. And they will stop following you. Just like if your favorite TV series, next Monday night, that you've been waiting all week for, if it comes on and there's no continuation of the story, if the characters have changed, if the storyline's changed, how will you feel? You'll feel disappointed, right? Will you watch it the next week? No. And that's how social media works too. So who could the characters be in your storylines? Like me, the people in my gym. Um, before my dad died, we would go, me and my dad and my mum, spinning five days a week in the Princess Yikes Sports Centre. So I would post about that every day. Oh, a bit emotional now. Um, my team. So here, Abigail Horn, she's a sapphire in my team. She got car plan, forever to drive, and she bought a yellow car. Now, the reason she bought that yellow car is because she's a fan of the movie Transformers. Do you know that movie? And in the movie Transformers, there's a character called Bumblebee, who is this, this fictional yellow car that, that transforms into a robot. So when Abigail got car plan, got forever to drive, she went and bought that car from the movie. So I shared that. And somebody wrote to me on Facebook and said, um, I know I said no to you about the forever opportunity before, but I saw that yellow car and I want one, sign me up. And that lady that sent me that message became my 17th manager six months later. And that made me Diamond Sapphire. 
And the reason that she trusted me that Abigail had bought that car and that I could help her buy that car too is because I'd always talked about Abigail before. So every time I worked with Abigail, she was, part of, she was a character within my storyline. So there was al already a story built up behind the moment of her buying that car. I talk about my dogs a lot. Look at him, isn't he cute? <laughs> um, I talk about my team coming around. I talk about my travel. And you pretty much can get to know my storylines and my, and my characters. And I'm all, I always continue those storylines. So this lady here, uh, the date on this was, I'm so blind, uh, January, I think it was January 2014. That was one of our first meetings. She was a bank manager at uh, Banco Santander in Lanzarote. She was on my chicken list. You know what that is? The list of people that you're too scared to talk to about the opportunity. She was a chicken list girl, but I met her in a, um, a gym class, and I added her on Facebook. We chatted a little bit, and one day she sent me a message, and it said, I'm interested in the forever opportunity, but I'm very skeptical, and I have a lot of questions. A week later, she joined. Six months later, she became a manager. The reason that she wanted to, to try the opportunity is because she just had a baby, and she did not want to go back to work full time. She managed to reduce her hours at the bank, and now she doesn't work at the bank at all. Thank you to Forever. So that's where our story started, and our story kind of ended the moment she took a picture of herself, I think in Madrid at Banco Santander, where she was signing the papers to leave. So any other mum that was watching that storyline and following that character, what would they think? Anne has helped that lady achieve her goal of reducing her hours at work and spending more time at home with her child. If Ange can help that girl do that, maybe Ange can help me. Is this starting to make sense? So it's so important that you introduce characters and you continue the storylines. And you'll also see there's a lot of color in all of my photos. Who's got a smartphone? Anyone got a smartphone? Everybody? Or some people got dumb phones? So if you've got a smartphone, it can take photos and automatically upload those. I'm not very technically minded, so I don't really know how to do filters or anything like that. I literally just take photos and upload them straight away. But I always make sure that anything I post on social media, I always post with a photograph. I, I, you will never see a status from me or a post from me that doesn't have a photograph because it's 98% less effective. People will look at the photo first and they will read what you wrote. So make sure you're taking lots of photos and you don't have a, a dumb phone. Make sure you, you're using your smartphone. So um, I'm going to skip this because it's too long, this next section. People ask me, how can I be seen and well-respected as a leader on social media? Um, as a leader by my team using social media. And I really think it's about having your subjects and creating interesting posts about those subjects, supporting charities. Um, like we, we support the Kennel Club, which um, helps dogs be rescued on, on our island. We rehome a lot of those dogs. Abigail with the yellow car, she took one back to England with her. Um, motivational quotes, funny things, um, sharing other people's businesses so that they will also perhaps support you in yours. And the really great thing now, well, you know, back in Hawaii some um, six years ago or five, six years ago, when I did the social media training, the Facebook training that I did was 20 minutes. It was part of a 40-minute slot by somebody else, and the rest of the, the slot was all about video marketing. And the guy was explaining, it was Andrew O'Hare, he was explaining that video marketing, this is five years ago, is the next big thing, and everybody should be making videos. So I did. 
So you might know me from videos, right? But I still believe that in those past five years, not that many people within forever have embraced that advice. And now more than ever, if you're not making videos, you're missing a huge marketing opportunity. I looked at Marco's profile uh, after he spoke, and you have a lot of videos, right? Videos are so, so important. Going live. Who goes live on social media? It's petrifying, but it's so intriguing. Who watches reality TV? Who knows Big Brother? Like, we watch a load of people that we don't know in a house every single week. Why? Because we are humans, and humans, by nature, are really nosy. We love reality TV. We love to see what people are up to. Believe it or not, people will love to see what you're up to, too. So we're talking a lot at the moment about Clean 9 and the, the F1 and... and What's it called? F15 now? F15? We got it. Have we got it now in Spain, yeah? November, great. So we're talking about these programs, which are absolutely fantastic. I would like to give you a brilliant idea for those. When your box arrives, go live on your social media. So going live means you are broadcasting a live video on the spot. Many people are scared of making videos. Because many people think, I'll wait until I've had my hair done. I'll wait until I've tidied my lounge. I'll wait until I've lost a few pounds. You know, people don't really care what you look like, but they do care what you're going to say. And I think it would be really, you're laughing because that's been you, hasn't it? Hit the nail on the head with at least one person in the audience today. Um, <laughs> um, what we do in our team is when the box arrives, we go live. So we go live generally in the evening. So you literally, as if you're going to make a status on Facebook, you literally click the button that says go live and you will automatically broadcast to your followers. And you can just say to them, hey, I've got this box. This is what's in it. This is what I'm hoping to achieve. Really excited about it. Maybe a bit nervous. Um, I'm making this video so you guys can hold me accountable and make sure that I'm not off buying ice cream or in the burger bar. And I'm going to share my whole program with you, the highs and the lows. Looking forward to your support. So you have now created a storyline. And it's raw, and it's you, and it's honest. And then the next day, maybe you're starting the clean nine. And you can take, put the um, camera up in your kitchen and show yourself. Say, right, so today I've got to have 120 mils of aloe. So it doesn't taste that great, but I've got this new product called Juice, which I'm going to squirt in. Has anybody had aloe with the juice in yet? Oh, it's amazing. I'm now drinking a half a litre a day. Apparently, Dominique Kip drinks one litre a day, so that works for her, and she looks like that. It's worth giving it a go. <laughs> um, so you can show them what you're going to cook on day three, for example. You can show them on day two all the free foods. So they can really understand and see what you're doing. You can go live after you've had a run, looking bright red and exhausted. It's like, oh my gosh, I just had to have a run because I have to do 30 minutes exercise on the clean nine. And I hate running, but I've done it. And now I'm going to make my shake. Let me show you what I'm going to do with it today. I'm going to put a banana in. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they can follow you like reality TV. And you can always say at the end of every video, if you want any more information, or if you'd like to be added to my Facebook group about the product, drop me a line and I'll add you in and you can see lots more recipes and ideas and other people that are doing the clean nine. So who is brave enough to go live? Yeah? Who's going to go live this weekend? Do you know what would be really fun as well? Go live about today. So you need a good internet connection and you need a good battery, okay? Be on 100% when you go live because when you go live, it drains your battery and you could be doing something really great. And it could be going really well and your battery goes. It's like so awkward. The great thing when you go live is that people can comment and ask you questions, which is a brilliant thing to do because when they're commenting and asking questions and you can answer them live, they might be asking you, 
Is the clean nine suitable for me? I don't really want to lose weight, but I want to look better and feel better. And you can read that question out and you can answer it on your live and then all the other people watching it can hear that answer as well. Such great marketing tool. So what could you go live about tonight? So you could go live tonight and you could say, hey guys, I'm super excited. Just want to share with you where I've been today and what I've been doing. So today we had a monthly training and recognition. We were over in Madrid at this cinema and I went with this person and that person. We learned this and that. So I'm super excited. What are you guys up to this weekend? People love to know. You need to do all of these things. You need to be out there. You need to be networking. You need to have your social media right. Because you guys in this room, you're the leaders. You're the leaders in Spain and Portugal and Romania. We've got Romanians in, haven't we? Yeah? Love Romania. Um, so you, you are the leaders. Oh, a little clap for Romania. Oh, everyone's going to clap for Romania. <laughs> no, I love it. If you ever get the chance to go, guys, go. I went to speak there. It was phenomenal. Um, you in this room are the leaders. So you are the ones that other people in forever are going to follow. So I have this saying, monkey see, monkey do. Monkeys always copy the monkeys, right? So you have to be the best possible example you, because people are going to follow you and copy what you do. And if you're not doing these things, if you're not networking, if you're not presenting yourself well, if you're not embracing social media and video, then your team aren't going to and the other people in forever. A rising tide lifts all ships. It's our responsibility, all of us in this room, to raise the business in Spain and Portugal. We're the examples that people are going to follow, so we have to take this seriously. Are you up for the job? Good. On social media, it's really important that you don't spam. Spamming would be sending people random messages, join my team, buy my products. It would be getting a picture from Google of a product and saying, buy this, buy this, here's my shop link. That's really not good. That's not going to make people want to look on your profile again. That's going to make people click the unfollow button, the unfriend button, and maybe even the block. And we don't want that, do we? We want to expand our network. We don't want to turn our network off. We want to turn them on. So what I do is when I'm using the products, so for example, when I did Clean 9, clearly I need to do another one. I've not been on my best sporting game for the past 12 months. Um, but when I, when I, when I do, um, for example, use the Clean 9, I say I am using this product because facts tell and stories sell. Create stories around the products that you want to sell. Don't expect to sell a clean nine if you haven't done it and blogged about it or gone live about it or shared your photos and story about it online. It won't work. Just like, so we're in a cinema right now. I haven't been to the cinema for a while. Can anybody recommend me a movie? Has anybody been to the cinema lately? Stars. Do you know what? I've never actually seen that. Okay, so he can, he can recommend me a movie because he's been to see it. So he can tell me a little bit about that movie, and hopefully if I'm interested in the movie, then I could go and see it. Those of you who couldn't shout out a movie to me haven't been to the cinema lately, so you can't recommend me a movie, right? But he can because he's been watching Star Wars, because he's one of... The Star Wars geeks. So, you can't be trying to sell products to people or recommend products that you haven't used. We, do, we did a survey of how many products the leaders in my team were using. Bearing in mind that I've got three sets of my downline in the global leadership team as well as me. And we did a survey of how many products we use per day 
and nobody uses less than 35 products per day from our range, none of the leaders in my team. So are you using enough products to be able to recommend them, to be able to create stories so that you can then help other people with the products? So have a think about that. And if you're not using enough products to share stories, then you won't be able to do your four case credits of retail. My four case credits of retail is always done by the second of every month. And the reason is that I have a continuous 20 to 30 customers. And those customers pretty much only buy three or four products. I can't sell the makeup because I don't wear a lot of makeup. Because it's, I'm just not that kind of girly girl. But I can sell the RG+. Plus because me and my family use it all the time. I can sell the gel, because me and my family use it all the time. I can sell the shakes, because me and my family use it all the time. I can sell the heat lotion, because me and my family use it all the time. We're a family of triathletes. We use the products all the time. You don't have to use all 200 products but you do have to be using some core products and sharing the stories about those products. I think people get a bit scared to talk about the products because they say, I don't know enough about the products. And if you said to Jane Leach or John Curtis, some of the top leaders in the forever world, if you said to them, can you tell me what the ingredients are in the aloe vera gel, they would say no. Even though they've been in the business for 21 years, they'd say no, but I know it makes me feel like this, this and this. And I know that if I don't drink it every day, I feel like this, this, and this. So they're talking about their experience, their stories. You don't need the facts, you need the stories. Does that make sense? OK, I spoke about a support group, right? I spoke about how important and how instrumental to my success my team group was, so our virtual office. I also created this for my Clean 9 customers and my sports product customers. So I have a fit group where my customers can share their experiences with the products. It's also a time saver for me because I'm quite busy. I don't want to be constantly talking to people on private message about the products. So if somebody watches one of my videos and says, I'd like to know more about that Clean 9, I say, great. Would it be OK if I put you into my group so I can share the information with you in full? They say yes. Never add anybody to a group without asking permission. That is just the same as opening your front door, grabbing a man in off the street, and making him have a cup of tea. Like, that is just so rude. And that is exactly what it looks like if you open a Facebook group and put people in it without permission. Always ask permission. So when people ask me about the products and I say, would it be OK if? They say, of course, it would be OK if you add me to your group. So they, they're added to my group. And in the files section is lots of information about the products. And in the main wall of the group is lots of people sharing their recipes, sharing their results. And their stories help to sell the products for me. So if you don't have a customer support group for the, the weight management products, I highly recommend that you stick that on your to-do list. So what have we got on our to-do list so far? Understanding networking getting our brand in social media right, and making sure that we understand how to go live and we start to do that, and supporting local charities. Finally, setting up your weight management support group. Yeah? Got those five points down? Yeah? Cool. This one, I don't really need to share here, do I? Because I found that part of my success was having a team identity. So when I went over to speak in Switzerland a few years ago, I saw that there was one particular team in Switzerland that were having more fun at success day than anybody else in the room. They were on their feet more, they were clapping more, they were dancing more, they were singing more, they were at the front of the stage clapping everybody that was recognized. And they all had green scarves on. So whenever somebody arrived at success day, they knew where their team were to sit with them because they just looked out for the, the green scarves. And I said to Miriam Koppel, she's a, the lady in the green, I said to her, Miriam, who are those people over there? 
in that corner, and she said, they're the team of me and Philip Ritter. Philip Ritter is the youngest diamond manager in the world. And I said, what's with the green scarf? And she said, that's our team identity. When somebody joins, we give them a green scarf so that when they arrive at a training or a presentation or a success day, they feel part of the team and it creates a really good vibe and atmosphere. So I went home, that was in June, I went home, I ordered the green scarves, and in July, that was me and my team at success day with the green scarf on. So you see, what I've done here is the monkey see, monkey do thing. I've looked at a leader more successful than me, seen what they were doing, and I've done the same thing. And having that green scarf really brought my team together. They absolutely love the team identity. And when I arrived here today, I saw loads of you guys have got your own team identities too. I've seen the Romanians with the white. I've seen the Portuguese with their flags and their green scarves. I've seen people with blue scarves from Switzerland. And if you don't have a team identity, get one. Even if you're the only person in your team right now. And maybe check if somebody in your upline has a team identity and use their team identity too. Marco's got this one right. So, be your best promotions person on and offline. Even though I wasn't building my business on Lanzarote, as soon as I started with Forever, the first thing that I did was go and have the logo put on my car. I don't drive that car anymore, thanks to Forever to Drive. Um, I went to every sporting event wearing a Forever t-shirt. Now, I was new, and I didn't have the money to go and buy these T-shirts. So what I did was I took all of the clothes out of my wardrobe that were plain, and I took them to a local printer with the logo of Forever on a USB stick, and I told the girl to put the logo on everything. Then I recruited her. So I had my whole wardrobe was Forever or RG stuff. And honestly, if I had a euro for every time somebody said to me, where did you get your forever dress from? Where did you get your forever t-shirt from? And all I did was literally go and get them made myself. It's so easy. And I'll let you into a secret. The RG dress on that side, I bought it on eBay, the plain red dress. I bought two or three. They were so cheap when they arrived. They were completely see-through. So that's me in Sardinia at an Eagle Manager retreat, and I'm wearing three dresses on top of each other. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be able to see everything. It was that cheap. So be your best promotions, girl or boy, on and offline, because out and about, like Marco on the boat to La Graciosa, people would see him wearing the argy stuff, and people will start to eventually say to him, what is that that you're drinking? What is that on your T-shirt? Also, any photographs that he was in that day, people will see it. And it makes for great colourful photos, right? So make sure that you're representing the brand on and offline. I always showcase the flexibility of our work. I think sometimes we can take it for granted. And we don't... Uh, when, we, when we become... Um, full-time in forever, I know there's a lot of old-school leaders in the room, I think we forget what it was like to have to work in an office nine to five. And the freedom of being able to work wherever you want on your laptop or your mobile is such an amazing thing. And I really think that we need to showcase that a lot more, the freedom and the flexibility and the choices that we get. So I always post about that, where I'm working from, how flexible my business is. Now, you could make the mistake of thinking that I'm a complete aloe bore, that all I ever talk about is forever an aloe. But actually, very early on, I learned that to keep people engaged and interested on and offline, I had to only talk about forever and the products 20% of the time. The other 80% was all about the other subjects that we spoke about earlier. Maintain the 80-20 rule. Don't be constantly forever this, allo this, RG+. Plus. Don't constantly be talking in real life and online about the, the opportunity in the products. Just 20% is enough. 
show more of an interest in other people. You can make more friends in you can you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you could make in two years of trying to get people interested in you. I know there are people in this room that have been forever business owners since the last time I was here. And I know you haven't attracted the right volume of people into your business that you have wanted to in those past three years. And the reason is you've spent those three years trying to get people interested in you. And you haven't been shown an interest in enough other people. That's a switch that you can make immediately. And you will see your results soar. So how does networking work in real life? So when I was in San Francisco after the Lake Tahoe Eagle Manager Retreat, um, I went to San Francisco for a few days with my boyfriend, and we called an Uber. We don't have Uber in Spain because the taxi drivers don't allow it. But in the USA and other places around the world, Uber is a taxi service that you can get on your phone with an app. So I decided to use Uber for the first time. It was created in San Francisco. So I thought, that's a good story for my social media. So I'm going to call an Uber and post about it on social media and see if anyone else has used Uber, get some engagement and get some conversation. Uber tells you who your driver is. So Uber told me, Jess, your driver is outside. I'd booked an Uber for a five-minute ride to Alcatraz from my hotel. So when I got in the car, I knew her name. So when I got in the car, I said, hey, Jess, thanks for picking us up. My name's Ange. This is Bart. Um, we we're in San Francisco for the first time. And she starts to talk to me. And I noticed that she'd got a tattoo on her arm. And I said, hey, that's a really interesting tattoo. Can I see it? And I realized that it was the logo of Iron Man, which is one of the big triathlon brands and triathlon races. And I said, oh, wow, my dad's an Iron Man, and my daughter is an Iron Kid, and my boyfriend is an Iron Man, and my brother's an Iron Man. Can I take a picture of your tattoo to show them? She's like, yeah, sure. And I said, how long have you been driving for, Jess? And she said, oh, not so long. I just got married, and I'm training for my next Iron Man. And apart from the driving, I also work in Soul Cycle, which is the indoor cycling centre that the Beckhams go to. And I said, oh, that's really interesting. And as I was talking to her, I was thinking, she's a triathlete, she's going to love our products. She's just got married, she's building a life for the future. She's working two jobs. And she's training to be, a tri uh, to be an Ironman. That doesn't work, because... When you train for Ironman, you have to dedicate your whole year to it. I thought, this lady could really benefit from both our products and our opportunity. So I said, as I got out of the car, Jess, you should work for us. You would love it because you'd be able to work in sports with people still, but maybe you'd have more time to train and more money to set up your new home with your husband. She said, that sounds great. I said, can we... Um, are you on Facebook? She said, yes. I passed over my phone. I said, send yourself a friend's request from me. And when I get back to the hotel tonight, I'll send you a message with some more information. And I got out of the car. That all happened in five minutes. When I got home that night, I had a message from her already. And she said, hey, Ange, I'd love to invite you to Soul Cycle for a lesson tomorrow. Would you like to come? I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to come. She said, I'll put you a guest pass on reception. I'll see you after the class. I didn't have any sportswear with me, so I had to quickly go and buy something. And I arrived at the class the next day, and to my disappointment, Jess wasn't there. She was off sick. But I spoke to the girls on reception. I took a photo. I put it on my Facebook page. I told them how to find me on Facebook if they wanted to see the photo. When I came out of the class... I had an email from Forever Living. That email said, congratulations, Jess has just joined your team. Please contact her as early as you can to welcome her to the team. My taxi driver had joined my team. I hadn't even sent her any information yet. 
But what happened is, because of my excitement and my enthusiasm in that five-minute Uber ride, because of the things that I'd said to her through natural conversations showing an interest in her, she had then been off sick the next day and she'd been looking through my profile. My profile backed up everything that I was telling her that we worked in sports, that we had a flexible way of working, and she had found the link to my FLP360 website that says, shop now, look at our opportunity, join now. She'd click join now, and she'd join my team. That's how to network in real life. Now, I could have got into that taxi, I was really tired, and just scrolled through my Facebook, chatted to my boyfriend, looked out of the window at San Francisco for the first time but I didn't. I used the opportunity to get to know her and show an interest in her, and as such, I had a new team member. That's how you network. Isn't it easy? We've got the easiest job in the world. Who thinks they could do that? That's all you need to do. Now, I will admit, that's the first and only time it's ever happened that quickly. Normally, there's going to be a bit of a period of getting to know each other, asking questions, answering questions. Um, you know, it might take somebody two years of watching you on Facebook, two years of following your stories and getting to know your characters and learning to trust you before they approach you about the opportunity or respond to you about the opportunity. But those two years are going to pass anyway, right? Three years have passed since I was last here. Imagine where you'll be in the next three years if you go and start to, na to network a bit naturally when you leave here today. Will you go and make sure that you are showing an interest in other people? Isn't it exciting? So I also take lots of photos of my team. So some of you will recognize some of these ladies. Um, because they're the characters in my story, and I keep introducing them, and I keep following on the storylines. So what next? If on social media, honestly, again, if I had a euro for every time somebody asked me this, I would be even richer. So um, on social media, if you are working with somebody and you can't get a chance to meet them in real life, I would always meet my prospects in real life for a coffee because it's an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball business. This is a business that's best built around your kitchen table. But if I really can't get out to meet someone for a coffee, then I'll send them a quick video. So we're at the cinema, right? So when you go to watch the next movie, you sit down with your popcorn and your Coke, and if you're a fatty like me, also a hot dog, maybe some chocolate. Oh, I'm getting hungry now. It's all right, I'll have a Pro-X bar. So... Um, so you sit down and you're ready to watch the movie, but before you watch the movie, what comes on? The trailers. Very short, exciting clips of other movies. And the idea of you watching those trailers is that you will be interested and curious enough and excited enough that you will want to watch the full movie next time, right? So that's what we send. We send our own trailer. So a three-minute video of you sharing your story and sharing what you're offering is something you can send somebody as your trailer online, and then hopefully they want to see the full movie. What's the full movie? The business presentation. This is great. It's not something we have to create ourselves. Joaquin's got the slides. He's got the slides for Portugal. He's got the slides for Spain. He's got the UK slides. All you need to do is record your voice over those slides, and that's your full movie. That gives you the opportunity to present the whole of the business to somebody online. I would only use my three-minute trailer or my full movie in extreme circumstances. I will always choose to get somebody on the phone or meet them in real life first. But if you really want to know, if you can't get out to speak to somebody or you're recruiting somebody, in Romania and you live in Spain, then this is a good way to do it. So if you don't have a three-minute trailer of just you speaking at home in your garden, working flexibly, and you don't have the full business presentation, then that can be items number six and seven on your to-do list, okay? Good. So I now have 19 frontline managers 
And out of them, nine of them said no to me. Who else feels really insulted, embarrassed, and awkward when somebody says no to the opportunity? Honestly, there is no need whatsoever because no is not always a no. It could be a not now. And if you keep in touch with these people and you continue to show an interest in them and you continue to build on your relationship with them, chances are by following you and being inspired by you and following what you're doing with the other characters in your storyline, chances are one day they're going to come back and the time will be right for them. And that's exactly what happened with nine of my 19 managers. Imagine if I had been too scared to speak to them again. Imagine if I'd stopped engaging with them and stopped building the relationship with them. Imagine if I took it personally when they said no. So actually, when somebody says no, I want you to celebrate that. When somebody says no in the future, you can think, yes, that's a team member for two years' time. I'll just keep in touch with them. How different will it make you feel if you look at it like that? So who's now looking forward to the next person saying no? I am. Because that next person could be the next diamond manager in two years' time. Happy days. I get no's all the time. And do you know what? I love it. I love it. And remember I said, I've got to update this slide, but remember I said I couldn't work on Lanzarote? Well, that was absolutely bull. Because six of my managers live on the island. So you know I said I couldn't sell aloe and I couldn't do the business on Lanzarote. And I know many of you feel the same about Spain, Portugal, Romania. You feel people aren't interested, people aren't motivated, people have a low salary. Stop telling yourself these bull stories. Everybody out there wants a better lifestyle, more income, better health, greater choices, more financial security. Everybody. Do you know how many people live in Madrid? 3.2 million people live in Madrid. Do you know how many, how many key people you need in your forever team? It's in the first steps to manager, so you should all know this. Five. Do you know how many customers you need? 20 to 30. If you live in Madrid and you don't have 20 to 30 customers and you don't have five key, key team members, then you're not networking, you're not sharing the opportunity. Isn't it exciting that there are that many people out there for us to share the products and opportunity with? Isn't it exciting? So number eight on your to-do list is Google your local population. In my village back in the UK, there are 645 people. I know in that village, I could find five key people and 20 to 30 customers. I know I can. And I know I can come into your village and do the same. Don't let me do that. Don't forget that somebody in my village of Playa Blanca had joined forever three months before I did and didn't recruit me. Why didn't she recruit me? Either she hadn't yet grasped the, um, the process like me. It took me a year to understand that I needed to share the opportunity and not just sell products. So maybe that's why. Maybe she hadn't written her who do you know list. Maybe... She just didn't like me. <laughs> Probably that one, to be honest. Um, but, you know, think how different it would be in her business right now had she have recruited me. Because I think it's pretty cool to have a diamond sapphire in your team, right? Pretty cool, yeah? So, what I want you, to, you guys to do is don't make that mistake. Like, the next Diamond Sapphire manager could live on your very street. And if you're not out there talking to them, how will you ever know? And how will you ever help them with financial security, better health, 
more time, more choices, more flexibility, more freedom. We have the most amazing opportunity in our hands, and it is a terrible thing if we're not sharing it with everybody. So Google your local population and be incredibly inspired about how many people are around you. Excuses are for people that don't want it bad enough. I put that excuse. I've made excuses. Don't make excuses. Take action. And lots of people will be thinking, even now, even after hearing all of this, lots of people will be thinking, she was lucky. She got lucky. I didn't. What I found was, the harder I worked, the luckier I got. This quote is a great quote. It says, entrepreneurs are willing to work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week. What does that mean? It means we're willing to speed up so that we can slow down. I worked so hard in that period up until my fifth anniversary with Forever because I knew that one day I wouldn't want to work that hard, or if I worked that hard for that long, one day I wouldn't need to. And then my dad had the accident, and then I couldn't work for 12 months. But because I'd put all that extra work in before, it didn't matter. Work hard now for later. Isn't it exciting that we can work hard now for our future? Not just our future, but for our children. Not just for our children, but for their children too. What an amazing opportunity that is. We are so incredibly fortunate to have this opportunity. I was ready to give up on month six, I'm not going to lie. Because I faced a little bit of negativity. I, didn't, I found it was too much work for too little money. And I was ready to give up. I actually wrote a letter to Forever Living to cancel my ID, cancel my account, I was done. And my upline refused to post it for me because I emailed it to her for her to post in England. Luckily, she didn't let me. I know sometimes this business gets hard, but let your upline, let us, let me believe in you until you believe in yourself. Thank God somebody believed in me and stopped me from quitting the business because my life would look very different right now. So in those five years that I worked really hard, um, and now we're six years in, what has forever given me? It's given me the time, it's given me the choices, it's given me the most incredible friendships around the world. I have been paid 1.4 million pounds from the UK alone. I also get paid in Spain. I also get paid in Romania. I also get paid in Portugal. I get paid in countries that I could not show you on the map. I don't even know where the Czech Republic is. I don't know where Australia is. To be honest, I couldn't really point out Spain on the map. But I get paid from all of these countries. It's the most incredible thing. I have no education. I'm not a clever girl. But I'm just a girl that always does her best with everything that I do. That's all you need to do, your best. Are you hand on your heart giving it everything right now? Are you doing your best? Because from today, when you leave here, you can do that. And look what it can give you. I've traveled the world. Last night when I arrived at the hotel, I decided to plan our 2017 holidays. We're going to New York, we're going skiing in Austria, we're going to Dubai, we're going to the Maldives, we're going on a Mediterranean cruise, we're going to Greece for two weeks. I planned all of these holidays for me and my family, for my mum, even for my ex-husband. And I planned a budget for these holidays and it was more than I ever earned in one year before forever. To have that kind of income brings you the most fantastic opportunities, and it gives you real peace of mind. My daughter Arabella goes to one of the best schools in Spain. She's only 12, but she speaks five languages. She's the most caring, giving, 
girl with the most positive mindset. She cares so much about other people. And I'm sure it's because of the forever family environment that she's been brought up in. It's amazing. Yeah, I've got my dream homes and my dream cars. But the best thing that I've got is peace of mind. You know, when you go to bed at night and you put your head on your pillow and you start to worry about things, generally, sadly, one of those things is money-related. And to not have that worry when you go to bed at night is the most amazing thing. No amount of money in the world will bring my dad back. But it does give me the freedom and the flexibility to be able to spend time with my mum and to be exactly where I need to be. And that I'm so incredibly grateful for. All of your dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them. Now, normally I would end my presentation here, but providing I've still got a little bit of time, have I got a little bit of time? How much time? <laughs> Should we just carry on? Because I would like to take the opportunity, because I don't know. I don't know when he's going to invite me back again. So I'm going to take this opportunity to share a little bit more with you that I hope that can help you in your business. Leadership skills. I'm asked about this all of the time. And I never really saw myself as a leader, um, but I think that I've become one now, so I'd like to share some of those skills with you. I truly believe that being a leader in forever is like being an expert plate spinner. So the first plate that you get in the air is your own 4cc business. You've got to get that one spinning. 4cc's a month is the very basic. So you get your own 4cc spinning, and then someone joins you. Woohoo! You've got to get them spinning as well. And you're spinning these plates, and someone else joins, and someone joins them. And you're spinning these plates like crazy. It's all about the momentum and the energy. And guess what happens if you stop that momentum and that energy? What happens to the plates? They all come smashing down. If you have ever been in this business and had to rebuild your team or start again with your customers, the reason is you, at some point, you stop spinning the plates. I never stopped. That is what being a leader is all about. And then what happens is you develop some of your team into leaders, and they go off and spin their own plates. And before you know it, you've got a whole team of expert plate spinners, and it's all about the excitement and the momentum and the energy. I really think that it's important to respect and to work with other teams. I work a lot with somebody who came in. So when I came into Forever and started to do things differently and started to be quite quick through the marketing plan once I got going, um, it, it became a bit of, um, bit of a big thing in forever. Like everybody knew who I was, everybody was watching my videos and I was the next big thing. And Jane Leach said to me, you know, Ange, one day someone is going to come and take over you. Somebody's going to come from nowhere like you did and smash all of your records. I was like, okay, cool. And they did. Emma Cooper came along. <laughs> and I could be jealous, couldn't I? I could be jealous and negative about Emma. You know, she, you know, if you like, stole my limelight. So when we're at events now, instead of a queue of people waiting to take a selfie with me, I've got a queue of people asking me to take a selfie of them and Emma. Can you hold my hand back if I take a picture with this lady? Of course. <laughs> and it's great. I love it. We have become, we're not even in the same team, we have become the best of friends. The best of friends. She's in my team page. I'm in her team page. Her team come to my events. My team go to her events. We work together. That's what the leaders do. We respect each other and we work together. And it is as important to network within the business as it is outside of the business. So never have any negative situations or bad vibes with you and other leaders. These are the people that will help you make the country great. Alone we are a drop, together we are an ocean. So maybe number nine on your list could be 
Which other leaders can I work with? Maybe I can put a joint training on. We don't, in our team, have closed trainings. We don't have closed business presentations. We open everything up to everybody. Because when one of us is winning, we're all winning. We don't do this alone. We do it as a company. And as we're talking about this, I think it's important that you learn to qualify for the events. I truly believe that many people are like I was. You don't really know how to qualify for the events. And I think if you learn to, how to do it, they're really quite simple. There's only five things you have to do every year to do chairman's bonus. There's only four things you have to do every year to be an Eagle manager. Okay, there's probably four pages about it in the company policy, but when it comes down to it, there's just four things you need to do. It's simple. Learn how to qualify for the events, plan how to do it, and just do it, because that's what's going to really help give you the confidence to recruit and to train your team, because you can say, I've done it, and I can show you how. I found, I discovered the secret to leadership. I noticed that when I was not in the right frame of mind through the shock and devastation of my dad being killed in the cycling accident, I stopped being the cheerleader. I stopped being the one that was always in the team page with the videos, always helping everybody else out, always the one with the high energy and the high vibe, the recognition, um, always cheering. When I stopped doing that, do you know what happened? Loads of people went down because their cheerleader wasn't there. I realize that when I'm not cheering, the team aren't winning. So if you want to look at American soccer or baseball or basketball, they hire professional cheerleaders. And the cheerleaders come onto the pitch at the start of the game. And what is their job? It's to cause a great atmosphere and a great energy to get the crowd going so that when the team come on, they're fired up and they're ready to win, right? That's your job as a leader. You have to cheer not just your team, but everybody's teams. Absolutely everybody's teams. Be the biggest cheerleader for the company, for everybody in it. Really important. I have been horrified over the years of the way that some distributors and business owners speak to and treat their local head offices. Like, these are the guys that glue everything together and make it possible for us. I have been in countries where people have said to me, our head office don't give us this, our head office don't do that, our head office is not like your head office. You know, if we want something doing in this company, we work with our head office to help them make it happen. We become the change that we want to see. It is so important that you hold those guys up there in the highest respect. I loved our head offices. I, you know, when I started in Forever in Spain, the, um, the country manager at the time wasn't selling, wasn't stocking the, um, the Clean Nine. In Spain, we didn't have any weight management products. And I said to him, how can I work with you to, to, bring, to bring this product to Spain? And he said, well, if you, can, if you can sell 240 units of Clean 9, I'll bring it into Spain. So I did. Work with your company. Work with your head office. Don't complain and bitch about what you haven't got. Be grateful for what they do and help them to develop the tools, the atmosphere, the trainings that you want. Be that person. Plan and review. If you don't plan your life, you leave it into the hands of others. And guess what they've got planned for you? It's not a lot. You know, I knew what time I had to be at the airport yesterday. I knew I needed my passport. I knew I needed an outfit for today. So I knew my goal was to speak at Success Day, and I knew the little steps that I had to plan to make it happen. Be like this with your entire life. Last night, I planned all of my holidays for 2017. 
Why don't you plan every single aspect of your life like you plan your annual holiday? Plan the next year. Plan the next three months. Plan every single week. And if things aren't going to plan, go back and review. So if I end October and my case credits and the promotions in my team aren't where, they, where I had planned them to be, then I'm going to go back. I'm going to rewind and I'm going to review the steps that we took and the things that we did through the month of October. And I'm going to work out how I can better plan and improve those for November. So there is a constant re review and plan, review and plan, review and plan. And without the review and planning, then you can't progress. So number 10 on your to-do list is to plan the rest of this year. Plan how many customers you're going to get. Plan how many team members you're going to get. Plan how many case credits you're going to get. Plan the things that you want to do with your family. Get some structure in your lives. Plan and review. Don't just let each day turn into a week. Each week turn into a month. Each month turn into a year. And you haven't achieved the things that you want to achieve. Only you are responsible for your own life. Do not be disappointed with the results you don't get from the activity you don't do. This, I believe, is a quote from the book of Rolf Kipp. And it says, forever is not the 100-yard dash. It is more like a marathon. You are not rewarded for starting, only persevering. The people still on the bandwagon, three, four, five years on, are the ones that are going to harvest the juicy fruits. I did nothing in my business for the first year. But pro rata, over six years, I've been paid 240000 per year, like double the prime minister, and I'm pretty dumb. <laughs> You're not rewarded for just starting. You're rewarded for persevering. You're rewarded for learning the skills. You're rewarded for doing the activity, for staying in for the long term. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. So don't leave or become disappointed or despondent when you don't get rich quick. Persevere. And I really think it's important for you to know, guys, and for you to appreciate, it's not about how many likes you get. It's not about how many products you sell. It's about how many lives you can change. My life has been truly changed by this opportunity. And I'm incredibly grateful that I get the chance to go and change others' lives. And I hope that you'll go out and do that too. It's time to make Spain great. Who's with me? Let's do it.